he defined us. I believe he defined our program. Everybody knows to this day, if they come to the rink and they see the purple team from Cole K, they know one thing, it's gonna be hard work. He defined that, and I believe that's the definition of Cloak K, Esco Carl, and his hard work, and we can thank him because he started it all. The Esco Carlton Lumberjack Boys Hockey Team is one of the most storied programs in Minnesota, a program started by Bill Kennedy in the 1960s. Kennedy was a no-nonsense type of coach. He only had one goal, to win. His gruff and rigorous coaching style made him a common target with players, parents, and area teams. His coaching career began at a young age. Well, I started coaching in high school when I played a few sports. My brothers needed coaches, so I volunteered and coached a little basketball, football, hockey. I kind of liked it. I enjoyed uh, organizing and the fundamentals and so forth. And then plus we won a lot, had some pretty good athletes. Coaching all over Minnesota, Kennedy was eventually hired to coach at Cloquet. Not having an arena in Cloquet, Kennedy traveled wherever he could to practice. I could do just about anything. We could skate anywhere, anytime of the night. Skate on ponds, skate on rivers, skate on sloughs, uh, things that most kids wouldn't do. And we didn't have an arena, so we had to rent a time at Superior and Two Harbors and places. Yes. And they'd be getting off the ice at 10 and we'd be starting and we'd be 50 miles from home. And of course, we didn't get home till 1 o'clock and then you had to get up in the morning and go to school. So it was kind of a test of how the kids, how tough they were. And, on indebted their love for the game they had. We kind of had a motto amongst the coaches and players that we won't get out hustled. Uh, we may be had less talented, but you won't outwork us. And I think teams respected that a little bit. But we always got a little credit because we played hard and weren't cheap. And then eventually we started winning a few games and gained a little more respect. With this motto in mind, Kennedy jumped at every chance he could to further better his team. The range would let us come up to their jamboree. So we'd have the range jamboree and the Duluth jamboree, which all the teams get to play. We scrimmaged at Rapids at 8 o'clock, went over to uh, Eveleth, went to Greenway. Kids would fall asleep on a bus. And that was all to get them motivated. And then one day we scrimmaged on Christmas Eve, and we had bus broke down. We didn't get them home till 7, 8 o'clock, so that was tough. A lot of parents screaming at me on that one. Over the next couple of years, the team started to improve, but the work never stopped. Kennedy then adopted a rigorous style of conditioning, which was commonly known as the Mattawa Death March. I think one fainted, but he was quite a hockey player. You know, you have this opening tryout, we let everyone try out. This kind of solves some of that. You don't have 500 kids trying out. So I'd get them out there and have them march from my house to the shelter. We were about 20 miles from town. Gave them a can of Shasta and on their way. It wasn't much for them, really. Yeah. They're young kids. They, they could do it in their sleep. It was just the kind of a test. You want to play, here's your test. And of course, I don't know how the kids felt about it. They probably thought I was crazy, and I probably was. But uh, we did it for a few years, and then it lost its edge. So, yeah. And they gave him a little T-shirt with a kind of a dead-looking hockey player on it. Every kid uh, that came out had run the thing. It wasn't a big obstacle. It was just a pain for them, 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, to be so, running through the woods. With Kennedy's hard-working coaching style, along with the dedication of his players, they only had victory on their minds. There should be only one trophy. And we got a battle, I don't know who it was, East probably, and we came in second. But when the trophy came, the kids put it down in the bench and they spit on it. 
And uh, we just left. And then someone says, who's got the trophy? I didn't know who had it. It's not my job to take the trophy. Well, apparently a cheerleader picked the trophy up. And someone heard about it and started yelling and screaming about it. So she brought it, thank God. And uh, the kids took it in the shower and peed on it. So it wasn't my doing. I didn't know anything was going on about it. But it was just the idea that it's second place. We don't want a second place. Are we proud of how hard we played? Yes. We don't need a second place trophy. That's like getting divorced. Kennedy's motto of we will not be out hustled finally paid off in 1982 when his team won the district championship along with a trip to the state tournament. We had had five or six chances to go and then we finally got over the hurdle. Now, this was tough because there was a lot of big schools and we were small and we had never won the district and we won the, the school went crazy because we had the final game against, uh, I believe it was Silver Bay. The kids, seniors in the school, left their classroom and went to the cafeteria. And here I'm a new teacher, and I don't know what the hell's going on. So they told me, go down there and get those students back. So I went down there and jumped up on a table in the lunchroom, told them to get back to class and we'll kick uh, Silver Bay's butt for them. And of course they were screaming and yelling and then got back to class. Everyone in Cloquet wore lumberjack stuff to the arena. They actually banned us from wearing it a few years. Of course, like, you know, what are we in Russia? We wore it anyway, but the place went crazy. And we'd win a game, they'd jump over the boards. There was no glass in those days. You could get hit in the face with a puck as happened quite almost every game. And of course the arena was madder and blazed on that, so. But it, it just kind of caught fire, and everyone was a little part of it. Cloquet fared well in the tournament, winning the Constellation Championship. But with these recent accolades that the Lumberjacks received, parents finally had enough. Kennedy was fired shortly after. Although it has been 30 years since Kennedy was fired, he still remains optimistic to this day about what he contributed to Cloquet hockey. I really wouldn't change anything. Maybe I could have been a little nicer, a little more humanistic. But then I think we wouldn't have been as good. I think you try to bring them to a breaking point, you know, and keep in mind it's a game. We did have a player's father die at a game. His uh, mother said, keep it from him when the game was over. And we had to tell him, come out here, I got to talk to you. Then uh, his uncle came over, and I mean that was tough. So there's a, everything's more important than a game. Yeah. But uh, we had a lot of fun, get together with the old timers at funerals and weddings and what have you, bunch of old players, and we had a good time. It was a lot of fun. So no regrets. Maybe I ought to retired before I got fired, but maybe not. Our program was built by guys like Bill Kennedy and others. Hard work, okay? Hard work. They always talk about basically you're going to get what you earn. Well, if you work hard, you should earn good things. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Here we go.